How's it going guys? Lian here and welcome to the second installment of my SketchUp tutorial series thing about. I haven't thought of uh, what to call this whole series yet but um, today we are going to do another SketchUp tutorial. More specifically, I'm going to teach you guys how to render photorealistic images in V-Ray. Okay, so this V-Ray setting that I'm going to be teaching you guys is optimized for quality and time. We are going to hit that sweet spot where the image is like good enough and the render time is not that long that it takes you 12 hours or a whole day to render so this is going to give you images such as these also these and a bunch of these images okay so you saw those images right there those images were rendered using these settings so let's begin the tutorial guys take note I am using V-Ray 2.0 I won't be using V-Ray 3.6 because some of you out there might not have this type of V-Ray so this is like the good middle ground so in between the old school V-Ray 1.2 and the like the newest version V-Ray 3.6. So this whole V-Ray tutorial is going to be very very fast. I'm going to try to run down the settings as fast as possible. And also I will skip the settings that I don't think are very important in rendering. I'll just tackle the most important settings that you should know when you are rendering images. So first thing you got to do is you got to bring out the V-Ray main toolbar right here. And then click on O or V-Ray for SketchUp options editor. Just click on that. And then this whole scary pop-up with a ton of like random alien looking words will come out like in direct illumination like what the hell is that? Anyways, let's go on into global switches. So global switches, the most important part here is ray tracing and materials. So under materials you should see max transparency levels that should be 50 and then transparency cutoff should be 0 0.001. And then under ray tracing, make sure the secondary ray bias is set to 0 0.001. Okay, so just pause the video right now and check if we have the same settings. Are you done pausing? Okay, let's skip system, camera, and environment and let's move on to image sampler. Close open parenthesis, anti-aliasing. Okay, click that. Under the image sampler tab, the only thing you have to know is you should set the type of image sampler into adaptive DMC. I found that Adaptive DNC is the most realistic rendering image sampler type and it's also like the fastest one of them all. And then under the type we could see minimum subdivisions and maximum subdivisions. Okay, minimum subdivisions dictates the minimum amount of like samples that the renderer will get, you know, that, that sort of stuff. So I just set this to 1 and then maximum subdivisions just set it to 8. The thing you got to know here is that the larger the maximum subdivisions, the higher the image quality that's going to come out. but the longer the render is going to take so I just set it to 8 because that's like the happy balance between quality and rendering speed okay next setting is DMC sampler since we chose adaptive DMC this tab is going to come out so DMC sampler just choose adaptive amount 0.85 noise threshold 0 0.005 minimum samples 8 and then global subdivisions multiplier 1 okay so just pause the video and copy those settings if you if I was too fast Okay, moving on to the next important setting that you should know, color mapping. So under color mapping, just choose rain hard because I found out that for me that is the best rendering type. So just check that, pause the video and check all the settings right here. Okay, did, did you guys get it? Okay, let's move on to output. Okay, so this output, some of you guys may be familiar with the output tab. So basically this is where you edit the size of image you want to output. Okay, so if you're like printing for only a cotton band size, I suggest going for 1920 by 1440. So that's the output that you should print if you want it coupon bun size. Anything bigger than that, like an A3 size, you should go for like 3840 by 2160. This setting right here. So if it's anything larger than a coupon bun, you should put it right there. Also, if you're going to display it on a computer screen, I think it's better if you choose this option. Okay, moving on to indirect illumination. Okay guys, so this is the most critical out of all the V-Ray settings that I'm going to teach you guys. Under indirect illumination tab, you guys could see GI caustic, so don't check that. So click on, click that, and then ambient occlusion. That should be on, that's the most important thing here guys. So here's a render with ambient occlusion off. And then when you turn ambient occlusion on, boom creates those shadows on the corners of the room makes the image much more realistic okay so for primary bounces you should check iridance map that's just like super critical that you check iridance map and for secondary bounces you should check light catch 
So what is primary bounces and secondary bounces? Basically, this is the calculator for the bounces of light that you see on your rendering. So if a light hits a surface, primary bounce and hits another surface and then bounces secondary bounce okay so that's just a basic explanation don't tell your teacher that because i'm probably wrong so yeah pause the video again copy my settings and let's move on to the next tab okay so iridance map and light catch tab is going to show up if you choose the proper settings under indirect illuminations okay so under iridance map these are my settings just pause the video right now copy all those settings and then you're good to go I won't be explaining all those stuff because there's a ton of mathematics involved and you know, I'm not really that good at explaining. So yeah, we'll just move on, just copy my settings. Moving on to light catch. So here under light catch, these are the only things you need to know is subdivisions and sample size. So subdivisions should be under 800. The larger the subdivisions, like if you make the subdivisions 1000 or 2000, the longer it will take to render your image but the quality of your image will be super crispy super nice and super awesome so i just put it under 800 i found that 800 is the sweet spot between high quality image and you know fast rendering time so put it under 800 all right copy my settings and let's move on here we have caustics so caustics is the light calculator that calculates the light for swimming pools so if you're not doing anything with water in it or like with a swimming pool and you know those light reflections underneath the swimming pool where there's like wiggly squiggly lights uh, don't check this because it's definitely going to make your render super super long all right so the last two tabs are default displacement and rt engine so these things aren't really that important to your render so i won't be discussing it so i guess i covered all of the settings and you guys just copy my settings so i guess that's my whole v-ray settings tutorial video I didn't really explain all of those stuff. Um, when I was learning V-Ray, I really didn't understand what the person on the video was explaining. So yeah, I got bored by the people explaining. So I made this video that is short and sweet and super fast so that you guys could go out there and render and maybe change some of the settings and explore on your own. Anyways, if you like this video, please like, leave a comment and subscribe down below for more videos like this from me, your boy Lian. Also, we are almost at a thousand subs guys. I can't believe that I'm actually going to reach a thousand subs. So I would just like to thank you guys out there for subscribing and liking and you know, sharing this video to your friends. So if you're not sharing this video, share it already so that maybe we could get a thousand subs next week and we could make a celebratory video like Ooh, a thousand subs. I can't believe we are actually getting into 1000 subs i'm so pumped so anyways thank you guys for watching i will see you guys on my next video also leave a comment down below if you found this tutorial helpful if you like these types of quick fast tutorials if you like those more detailed tutorials uh maybe i'll make a detailed tutorial of this like explaining every number that you saw on those settings but if you liked it please comment down below that you like short videos that are direct to the point because that's what i'm trying to do with this channel so anyways I'll see you guys on my next video. Flying peace. <laughs>